Hello and welcome to Chinivision 2, where I do less polished videos and bits and pieces, because today I wanted to talk to you about when everything changes. Magazines come and go. Sometimes they're fondly remembered magazines that fade away slowly over a period of time and then close down. Sometimes they go down in a ball of flames like Newsfield did, although the sap and crash have been going downhill for quite a while. Magazines may not get even any mention at all that they're actually closing down, like inexplicably abstract action, which just didn't turn up one month. And then we have Your Sinclair, one of the most influential computer magazines of all time. Its fingerprints are over everything in terms of gaming magazines. OK, I don't read computer magazines anymore, but, you know, you can look at things like Amiga Power that took their influence from Your Sinclair and then even Amiga Power being reflected back into Your Sinclair. And it was a magazine I, I really enjoyed. Now, a lot of people say that it was no good after it left Dennis Publishing, and I disagree. And actually, Your Sinclair is a magazine that, that actually had a, a second wind in its final kind of year or so. And and I was really enjoying it, although even though it, the page count was going down and down and down. So the August 1993 edition turns up. And um, you can see there that the cover, and we just scroll down. So the usual thing, or the flannel panel, uh, ABC of 20,775, and still damn proud of it. And uh, it's not the best scan in the world, but uh, your product textual conceptualization is Jonathan Nash. And uh, <laughs> product and scribe and officials, Craig Broadbent, Simon Cook, Simon Forrester, Dave Golder, uh, and uh, Rich Pelly, and so on. Uh, this kind of effort that John Nash, the editor, used to put into the magazine, just all, all this. So, yeah, he, he did all this and came up with it. And uh, empirical product over serialization list, Chris Anderson. Um, and fiddling around with the flannel panel. Um, and uh, there's usually little bits and pieces in in the flannel panel there. Um, odd film quotes like, she's a friend of ours. And yeah, I mean, my point of going through this edition here, because you're seeing the title is about the last issue of Your Sinclair, is we need to mention how I first learnt Your Sinclair was closing down. And it was here on this page, which is page six. Um, it's a note from John Nash saying, hello, before we start, some very good news, and there's some stuff about Linda Barker getting better. And basically, you get a bit about... And I remember reading this on my bedroom floor and going, oh, no, YS is closing down. Yes, after a decade of the as the world's most crap spec Mac in a funky Skillo sort of way, your Sinclair is turning the sign in the door I'm putting the chairs on the table or a similar metaphor of your choice. Um, and we go down to the bottom, Invite they invite some warm memories. and But let's not get all depressed and mopey. There's still this penultimate issue to get through and what a fine and only slightly crap mag it is. Um, and yeah, so there's John Nash saying next month is going to be the final issue, but there's going to be um, a good farewell a big farewell issue, which, you know, you're wondering how that's going to go because you look at your Sinclair at this point, and I go through all the pages of the magazine, there's going to be, what, 30 pages in here? Um, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 36, including the back page. There's no uh, Spectrum Games to advertise, so it's a big advert for Silica on the back page. Still a fair bit of... Um, it, it, it's all about getting people to upgrade now, isn't it? I mean, here we've got the Amstrad uh, 386SX, which I think... I always think those Amstrad PCs are pretty neat with their styling. Very compact cases. And uh, the 486 there for 799. Um, the trouble is they didn't really have... That's just not a bad spec, 486, 33 megahertz... I don't know what this 92 megahertz thing at the bottom there is, but uh, some kind of silica lies. Yeah, I'm going to say lies. 
because how do you get a a 33 megahertz machine? I think it's an SX. These scans really aren't any good. Oh, they use. Oh, sorry, they use the Cirix chip. <laughs> so <laughs> we get a 33 megahertz chips, and apparently that's 92 megahertz in Cirex la la land imaginary funky um performance marketing bull basically oh dear yes anyway that's not why we're here is it i'm wittering on here we are the final issue of your sinclair and if i can get this on full screen someone's gonna go chill you're using a mac how dare you use a mac you should use namstrad Every time, every time I show the Mac desktop, someone says, someone complains. Anyway, here's the big final issue. And I remember going to the news agents on a Saturday and getting this. The Old Sinclair first farewell tour. First farewell tour. How right you were, John. Uh, it's the September 1993 edition. It came out mid-August 93. 2.95 with no tape. So we go in here. And instead of a normal contents, you've got all this going on for the jugglers. Jugglers, ahoy. And uh, hello and welcome to the very last ever issue of Your Sinclair. Within this conveniently portable tome, you find all manners of features telling you just how thoroughly splendid YS was. In addition, there's a mini edition of YS proper in order to round off all our outstanding series. And yes, you've got 63, well, actually more than 63 pages. Oh, you've got 68, well, uh, yes, yeah, 68 pages because it counts down. Again, the effort John Nash puts into these things. Um, and not forgetting that he used to put extra stuff on the cover tape um, on that. Uh, it, it was the Dark Star um, kind of teletext system, wasn't it? And I remember reading one of those and him putting a kind of bit in about, is anyone reading this? I, I, I wonder why I bother. Or something like that. It's 3 a.m. I'm really tired. I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I care. Or something like that. It was really kind of heartfelt uh, thing he put in. But here's pictures of all the jugglers. Of all the Your Sinclair peeps. Can I zoom in? Can I zoom in? Can we see them all? Can we see them all? Shinny uses the keyboard to go around. There we go. It's everybody. Look, there's Jay Nash. Um, never had his photo taken. <laughs> if you look at Amiga Power, I don't think he ever has his photo in Amiga Power. But uh, in Your Sinclair, actually, he does turn up. Because he can't really avoid having his... Photo taken. There's friend of the channel, Steve Anderson. Hi, Steve. Um, Kev Hibbert, who's a uh, before my time. Morrissey. Ridge Pelly. Um, we've got Jonathan Davis there. Dave Golder. Andy Hutch Hutchinson. Uh, Stuart Campbell, before all that business with the Scottish stuff. Andy, the art editor. Uh, that's uh, Andy uh, Ide, is it? Yeah, Andy Ide. Um, that's Matt Bilby, uh, who, uh, launch editor of, well, he came across from Dennis with the Orson Clare, launched Amiga Power, and, uh, also launched Edge, I think. Uh, that's Marianne, the art assistant, uh, Marianne Booth, yes. Uh, there is Linda Barker, who had been very, very ill just before this. I, I believe she'd, um, it was around, it was the same time Leslie Crowther had his crash on the M5, and apparently, apparently, I think someone said she was in the the same ward as Leslie Crowther um, after he had his crash there. Um, I think someone said that. And uh, yeah, you know, got better and edited Amiga Power, but, you know, very sadly didn't go on to do more magazines because she was a fantastic editor of your Sinclair. Really, really good. And did things, invented things like the Subs Club newsletter, which got put out to all the future magazines. Uh, there's Sal Meddings and there's the official uh, uh, Shed Sprog. Uh, is that Eliza? Eliza Meddings. And then John Nash needs to write a few bits and pieces. You can get this online, so I'm not going to read all the contents to you. But uh, there you go, another picture of John Nash down there. A, a load of editors there. If we... Go in there. I mean, this is all done at such short notice as well. And they managed to get as many people in as they could for, for all this stuff. Well, obviously, most of them be working for future, but, you know, hey-ho. And they speak to lots of P 
people like Phil South, Rich Pelly, who of course is over at Amiga Power, are still doing stuff with YS at this time. Marcus Berkman, who went on to huge success with a, as a writer, he turns up in all sorts of places these days. Uh, James Leach, the inventor of the nonsense caption. Um, just kind of putting completely random things on the captions of his games. Um, and then we go to the YS story. Tells you all about the kind of goes through the years of your Sinclair. And then we go through to the YS guide to everything. Now, memory says that this was all typed in, was it? Uh, uh, there you go. It's Lay Love, Di Love Day's easy to use guide. Um, because he was a student or something, wasn't he? He typed it all in at, at, um, at a kind of school or college or something. And a massive, imagine doing all this. It's every game reviewed in YS ever in an era before kind of easy to use. Well, you could, I suppose Excel was around, but yeah, he went through and did all this. And which is nuts. Every score in your Sinclair is here. And I forget this. I forget this resource exists. I end up on Spectrum Computing looking up scores when in actual fact I should just print these pages out because every YS score and, and does it have the issues? Yeah, it has all the issues. Everything's here. Apart from some screenshots of the games because they clearly didn't have enough time. So they just clearly did the best thing they could, which was correctly to put in a picture of Diana Rigg. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant resource that, you know, at the time, you'd be thinking, ah, oh, you know, what, what are we going to use this for? And all these years later, I look at it and go, this is bloody brilliant. This is superb. This is a fantastic resource for someone like me, uh, putting together videos uh, for YouTube and, and what have you, because it's all here. I literally, as I go through this, I cannot believe I've not got this printed out and just directly to reference it. If you run a YouTube channel, or podcast, or what have you, for goodness sake, don't go on Spectrum Computing and search it all out and end up scrolling through and waiting for things to load. As brilliant as Spectrum Computing is, it's all here. And you just find the issue and go and see the review. Um, it's It's brilliant. Uh, this is the Grand Chaos Playoff, um, which uh, basically the Warriors team played Chaos, and it was uh, Chris, uh, uh, the editor, and Steph the Shark, Craig Borbent, and Steve Anderson there, and uh, Steve looking like a surfer dude with his long hair, a friend of the channel, as I, as I consistently mentioned. Hey, we've got, we got friends who... We got friends who were there. It's like being in Nam. Steve was there. Uh, Jonathan Davis and Rich Pelly. And uh, Stuart Campbell, who apparently was washing his hair and uh, forgot to turn up until it was too late to join in. And there uh, we've got some lovely pictures of them playing Chaos up there. And you get to see a little glimpse of the YS office, which is fascinating. Amsterdam Action is quite good at showing the office they work in. But, uh, you know, you don't really get to see much of YS. And actually, they're in the same office. But it's time YS and, your, YS and Amsterdam Action shared an office. So you're kind of seeing in the same place. But you can see the kind of mess and old issues of your Sinclair down there. Picture of Steve's programming laundrette. That's presumably Jonathan Nash's desk as editor with his Mac. Um, and the Spectrum Plus 2 with multi-face so they can take the screenshots. And a Plus D as well, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, let's come across here. And one of my favourite pictures of all time in your Sinclair. <laughs> I love this. It's <laughs> Steve Anderson being... <laughs> Just doing a prank phone call on Jonathan Nash. Uh, it's all lovely. It's all lovely stuff. And again, it's just all this content. Letters page as standard. Adverts to buy an ST for 
149, goodness me. It's desperate times for the ST now, isn't it? 149 pounds for the Discovery Pack in 1993. You might think that's good value. I would say, um, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's dire times, isn't it? I mean, oh, the ST price has really crashed. I'm just going to say I wouldn't really have my eye. I already had an Amiga by this stage. And around this time, my ST only mate had dumped his ST and bought an A1200 as well. But what are you getting on here? You get a whole load of games. Um, your total value of your pack is £721.45. It's yours for £149. Uh, it really, really says it all, doesn't it? Still, if you want to be really rich today, you just buy a Falcon and... Uh, You'd be a millionaire now if you came to sell it. 12-inch monitor for your ST, £69. Nice. Uh, High-res mono monitor, 129 That's a bit more interesting. I mean, who wants a... <laughs> Represents colour in unlimited shades of grey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I... Oh, my God. Just, just, just... I... I... It's a grey screen monitor, so, yes... It's going to show everything in grey, but not just grey, unlimited shades of grey. And the final person to get a train spotter award in YS is Stuart Campbell for spotting an error in a reprint of something he wrote. Uh, the Midview magazine is a poster. And helpfully, yes, they have put adverts either side there. So if you want to rip out the poster from your very, very collectible uh, final copy of your Sinclair. And this, incidentally, I had this. I sold it a few, 10, 15 years ago for quite a decent amount of money. It was 15, 20 quid at a time when I needed it. About 2002, something like that. Uh, Killer Column from Outer Space is still here. Uh, this morphs into effectively FSX. Uh, Dave Golder wrote this and it just has a, it's the remaining bit of the lifestyle experiment your Sinclair had. And a decent column. Uh, Doctor Who is coming back. Yeah, 10, you give it 10, 11, 12 years, and it will be. A nice specy emulators feature from Simon N. Goodwin, and that's continued from the previous issue. Really useful stuff, because you really didn't know um, about this stuff at this time. Emulators today, well, everyone's got them. Back then, this was really new and exciting stuff. And reading about it in here, um, I didn't have the internet at this time. But a year later, um, just over, I would. And I'd be starting to download stuff and experiment with emulators. Uh, Sam owners uh, uh, can be excited by the Sam page. All, all two of you. Public Domain and Ernie the Psychotic Madman, the final chapter. Uh, Craig Broadbent's last program pit stop. This, you know, it's lovely that the programming continued right the way through to the end in YS with some nice listings. And it's just that kind of, yeah, it's not all about games. We're still doing a little bit about programming and stuff. And there's more here. You got, yeah, that's it. The last program pit stop ever. Spectec, Simon Cook, all the usual technical stuff. More adverts here. We've got all oh, Spectrum plus two power supplies, 1999. Oh, plus two way and plus three power supplies, 1999. Should have bought a few of those along with the tape alignment kits and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, trading post. They were still going as of a few years ago, weren't they? They had loads of stuff. Uh, people buying loads of Amstrad stuff off them even just a few years ago. I don't know if they're still there. I think it's now a different business that sells just antiques. I did email them, but they never, never got back to me. Modem feature, communications, with Simon Hindle. And uh, more, uh, Rich Pelly's Guide to Your Sinclair Lingo. And, of course, all the, all the uh, small ads here. Uh, so what we got in the small ads? Uh, what... Uh, 
for sale. One two eight K light gun and games. Two joysticks and over one hundred thirty five pounds worth of games, including WWF. Only eighty pounds. I think he might be pushing it there, Tom. Um, yeah, it's a uh, plus the excellent condition, hundreds of mags, over two hundred games, all for one hundred and seventy pounds onwards. Uh, to be honest, it really isn't the time to be selling a Spectrum, is it? This isn't. This is the, the all of you want to sell your Spectrums because you want this, or you want Amigas or got Amigas, and I'm going to say it, it's not a seller's market. Um, plus three disc drive, multiface three, blank disc, loads of games and magazines, one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. Uh, anything else exciting? Two plus two, over two hundred games, three joysticks, mouse. Graphics package language, user manual, manual sound sampler, good condition, £200. David, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. Oh, Sam Coupe, 512K memory, cassette and joystick, excellent condition, 275. Again, um, very collectible today, but 275 for a dead machine with no software. Sorry, Sam fans, but uh, yeah. Plus two for sale in good nick. £370 worth of software. Whole lot worth 500, will sell for 160. Um, you'd have to be a lunar, it's kind of lunacy I'd do, admittedly. But uh, yeah, it's 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 not good, is it? It's. Um, right, we've got the results of the Your Sinclair Games poll, where in the last issue, uh, readers had a very short amount of time from publication date because of the lead times to get their votes in to vote for the best Spectrum games of all time. And we have, I'm going to zoom in the list here. On the left, we have the Reader's Poll, and on the right, the official Your Sinclair Poll, as done by your uh, Stuart Campbell. So you know the score. 3D Death Chase is um, top, and there's also all the games you'd kind of, not the games you'd expect, and the thing is, a lot of the games in the list here had, a lot of them have been forgotten about, but when Stuart did this list, it really revived them. 3D Death Chase, we've forgotten about by now. And actually, it's remembered because he put it in this list. And putting stuff like um, All or Nothing, Stop the Express. Up top, Stop the Express is so good. Is it the fourth best Spectrum game of all time? I don't know, but it's an interesting choice. And it's certainly in the top... 25, and I can't, with Stuart's list here on the right, I can't really argue with any of it. You can argue that, should he, well, let's try and argue with it, because we've got the, what the readers think on the left. So the readers put Chase HQ at the top, Rainbow Island, second R-Type, third, SimCity, fourth, Chaos, fifth, Manic Minus, sixth. Chaos wouldn't even be in the top 20 if it hadn't recently been on the wires cover tape. Um, 3D Death Chase is 10th. Again, that wouldn't be in there if it hadn't been in the Your Sinclair Top 100 and put out on the cover tape as well. Now, there is down here somewhere. There we go. 83. Horace Goes Skiing is the 83rd best game according to Spectrum owners or Your Sinclair readers. Now, I have a confession here. You see, I got my copy of Your Sinclair second to last issue on the pretty much the day of publication. And that afternoon, Saturday afternoon, I posted off my list of games and I didn't give it too much thought. But I'd been playing a lot of Horace Go Skiing at that time. And while I didn't stick Horace Go Skiing up first, I stuck it somewhere in the middling positions with the unfortunate effect that however many points were allocated from the middling position I gave it, Horace Goes Skiing comes in at 83rd on that list because I cannot believe anybody else would be idiotic, stupid, weird enough to put Horace Goes Skiing in that list. Every other game in that list, I can think, yeah, I can see that. I can see most of that. Um, 
Horace goes skiing, I just cannot. And I'm afraid it is totally and utterly my fault. Um, Nigel Mansell's World Championship, one of the last commercial games done in 99. Did Street Fighter 2 make it into the list? I um, don't think it did. Um, but uh, you see, again, 35 Peking. Peking was a game given away on the Your Sinclair cover tape. Um, and yeah, most of this makes sense on there and uh, john nash makes reference to jay nash makes reference to surprise entry of the list had to be horace goes skiing we thought it the worst the horace trio but you evidently took the alpine adventures of the mutated blue blob to your hearts or something um th they voted the worst game of all time is uh santa's christmas capers uh alternatives to the official card the christmas and the game we're really milking for suspense. Uh, oh, yeah, the bottom game of all time is Count Duckula 2. Uh, yeah, so... And I didn't win. I didn't win the prize. Uh, but Gary Lancaster of Bristol in Somerset, an active member of the Save Avon project, um, won some games. So... Yeah, so sorry about Horace Ghost Skiing. That was probably my fault. Uh, Stuart Campbell feature here, the games that time forgot, alerted me to uh, Eric and the Floaters, um, which I really like. They're the, uh, of course, the predecessor of Bomberman. And then we go uh, to a, a feature about fanzines. And then it's Goodbye. Um coupon you can cut out getting people to try and get publishers to publish games that's not going to work um and then the final final panel and no advert on the back page it's just uh andy and jay nash riding off into the distance so that is the final issue of your sinclair possibly the best magazine computer magazine ever and certainly the best final edition of a computer magazine ever thanks for watching